And we're live, guys. So let's get right on to this uh, keto talk about the benefits and the problems with keto or mistakes or issues. So here we go. Uh, all right, you guys are chiming in. So I'm going to go right into the benefits and then the mistakes. Uh, and then I'm going to take your guys' questions and bounce. All right. Hi, everyone. Coming into the chat. So here we go. Now, the top five benefits. Now, I'm starting with the benefits because people are tired on my tired of me on my Instagram. I'm always talking about the mistakes. So I thought I'd talk about the benefits. Yeah, she caught me live. So here we go. Number one, it's the most obvious. You know what you got? Some energy. <laughs> yes. Y'all have some energy on keto. And there are reasons why you have energy. And I think that people get so caught up in this whole weight loss hysteria, they forget. What's up, Deborah? People forget that keto is actually good to heal your body, right? Your metabolic inflexibility, including crappy energy. So that's the main thing that you want to look for and create a goal. Now, the second benefit of keto, I think, is the fact that you can stabilize your blood sugar, which then stabilizes your, produ your reproductive hormones. So a lot of you people um, are having some issues. Men, you're aromatizing, right? You're getting some boobies, just saying. And, or you're getting really flat in the muscle or the sex drive has gone down. Uh, hi, Whitney and everyone. Uh, thank you. Was it Malak? Whose name is that? Malika says she loves the videos or he loves, no, she, my bad. Okay, so, um, no one talks about this stuff, so I thought it'd be very interesting to talk about how the man boobies and the lack of sex drive because of the low testosterone, higher raised dehydrated testosterone and ever so rising estrogen in men, for real though, okay. uh, which creates depression. So all of these things are connected with the benefits because if you're not having depression, and that's a huge one, right? balancing out your uh, amino acids and getting that serotonin production back on and the melatonin. So I would say that sort of trying to get anxiety down, uh, poor impulse control, depression, that's a benefit of ketogenesis because a lot of you guys are eating, well, at least my protocol, a lot of you guys are eating things that are irritating the gut which creates an inflammation in the entire body doesn't matter if you're doing a standard american diet or low carb high fat or even a ketogenic protocol a lot of you guys are eating foods that you cannot digest so if you clear out the junk and you add in the right foods and rotate them then you can clear this gut uh, gut you can clear this up by clearing this up so the third benefit is to fix the gut right? The gut. A lot of you guys have gut issues. You don't know it. So it's like reproductive hormones, gut issues, energy. You know, I've done tons of videos. Yes. To like up the stream, just hit the X in the corner and the chat will collapse and you hit the thumbs up icon and then the chat icon and you're back. So, uh, here we go. Um, there's something going on with this YouTube algorithm. It's like I used to get like almost 200 people. Now there's like 30 people, but it could be the time. Let's see, get rid of heavy whipping cream and sub with coconut. Sub with coconut cream and milk. Whitney, be careful. Whenever I see people are eating very highly palatable foods on keto, it makes me wonder a little bit about food cravings and addictions. Now, that's the third problem. So the, the third, sorry, the fifth one is getting rid of all the cravings, right? A lot of you guys are, uh, um, you're food addicts and you're bingeholics and you're constantly craving bad food. So that all of these things tie together, like 
you know, your, your cravings comes down to what you're deficient in. And then so that normalizes the cravings of food addictions, which then you stabilize your blood sugar. So those things are connected. The blood sugar is going to stabilize the reproductive hormonal system, your adrenal system, which is obviously connected. That's the energy. And then the thyroid. So all of these things are all connected. Now, candida and parasites, I think, is part of the top five benefits of ketogenesis by healing the gut is to balance the gut flora through, of course, like I said, doing the right protocol, understanding what your gut can tolerate, what you're deficient in, what you need to uptake. Um, and then I would say the fifth, fifth one, <laughs> sixth one, is healing all of your autoimmunity. That goes from, here's the list of, we're talking lupus, cancer, uh, thyroid issues, adrenal insufficiencies, um, skin issues like psoriasis, eczema, um, uh, all of the inflammatory gut issues like diverticulitis, ulcers, um, Crohn's, irritable bowel syndrome, uh, when you, we're talking about the reproductive issues, a lot of women are getting cysts these days, endometriosis, fibroids, and they're just, doctors are just ripping out their uteruses like this, and gallbladder issues, and acid reflux, which has a lot to do with the stomach acid, which, ha which has a lot to do with the gut. So as you can see, it's kind of hard to say, like, here's a clear line that's number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five, because they're all connected. And so people are using keto for weight loss. And I'm like, if you have problems with your blood sugar, you're probably going to have problems with your insulin and glucagon balance, which then you're probably going to have problems with your adrenal issues, thyroid, and ultimately that's going to affect your mood, serotonin, and gut brain connection. So it's all connected. So you don't have to do keto forever but you have to do it for a while to heal the body and to get it right there's a lot of experimentation that has to go on because if you do the wrong version of keto you can hurt yourself as i say in all of my videos now somebody said that i think it was good morning america which i should tag that when i post this did a keto thing yesterday somebody said and they said that it was bad for your heart <laughs> look because people are having heart palps i was like do they not have a doctor on staff Heart palpitations is not coronary artery disease. It's an electrolyte imbalance, people. Now, it could be also low iron, but that's not coronary, coronary artery disease. Ay, 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 do people not understand how this thing works? Um, all right. Now, I didn't include weight loss as a part of my top five, but that is also a part of it. You can also experience autophagy. <laughs> you can also, it, all, all on keto. Uh, you can also experience methylation and healing of your biliary system, which is your liver, kidney, and gallbladder system that collects stones. For over a year now, I'm doing, I'm down to 30 kilos, have normal blood sugar, what level? Mm, no more medications. That's great. 30 kilos in a year. Is that about right? 30 kilos, 58 pounds. That's about right. Good job. Now, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the, the horribleness of keto, and then uh, I'm going to take your guys' questions and bounce with it. So, okay, you guys know, I have to say this because I get a lot of new people. I'm 51. I'll soon be 52. If you go back, don't go back too far to my energy videos, but if you keep going back, you'll start saying, I'm 45, I'm 46, I'm 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52. And I keep, I'm in workout tops just to show you guys what a ketogenic body looks like at 11 years of doing it straight without any carbs, sugar, sweet fruits, nada, no coffee, no freaking green tea, caffeinated, n like literally no, n like nuts, like almonds. I've done macadamia, macadamia nuts, no almonds, no, none of this stuff. Now, Let's go into the crappy things. Okay, number one. You ready? Y'all ready? Hypoglycemia. 
you guys are already on the verge of that. Like, don't tell me half y'all aren't like tired in the afternoon or you wake up tired or you wake up in the middle of the night, right? Or if you don't eat something, you're hangry, hungry, angry. Uh, you get the jitters and um, that's a lot of you guys. But yeah. So, um, let's see here. Yo, book with meal plan showing 1200. Well, Mar Mar Maria, bless her little heart. She's just a lovely little woman. But you know, her, uh, her cookbooks, I think she makes amazing recipes that are not for people with issues. And everybody has issues, so. You know, she seems like a lovely person, but all those ingredients and 1,200 calories is not ketogenic. You see, 46 years what, 46, 46 years of yo-yo dieting thank you oh so i hope this stops so a lot of people yo-yo diet and all of this so first thing is hypoglycemia now the problem with developing hypoglycemia full-on is that you probably already had it you guys are having post post prandial hypoglycemia after like a lunch or reactive hypoglycemia which you can have after a breakfast or even in the middle of the night so that just gets worse and if you're experiencing hypoglycemia, yo, we could just put the timer on when you start to develop thyroid issues. And then when you start experiencing reproductive issues. So people's hair is falling out because of their thyroid. They don't realize that they have thyroid disease. I forgot to say, which is Ray, Ray Coleman three. Thank you so much, Ray Coleman three. Uh, Ray Coleman three. Uh, okay, so I'm going to get you guys' questions soon. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, another problem is gut issues. So, a lot of you guys start eating cheese and you never ate cheese before and you're just gassy and some of these foods are just really having a hard time digesting because you guys are eating mono foods and then you're not eating the right macro amounts for yourself. And so these, these symptoms, the top five, like hypoglycemia, thyroid, reproductive skin issues, an explosion of your candida. These are all the problems and electrolyte imbalances. And then, uh, People have low blood pressure on keto because of the electrolytes. Okay, so it's electrolytes is not just, oh, I got a muscle cramp. It's heart palpitation. Uh, it is uh, headaches, um, constipation. This is all electrolyte imbalance. Constipation, electrolyte imbalance. Headache, electrolyte imbalance. Um, dehydrated, electrolyte imbalance. You guys aren't getting your electrolytes in. So when the day, Today Show said that heart palpitations were heart disease, no. People are having heart palpitations, heart palps, because they have an electrolyte imbalance and they're eating cheese all day, drinking coffee and doing intermittent fasting on keto and it's making people sick and people are getting colds and flus and people's hair is falling out and they're losing a lot of muscle. So another problem in my top five is the, the, the overproduction of cortisol, which means overproduction of, uh, or a um, sort of a series of leading to catabolism or pregnenolone steel, or women's menstrual cycles are going longer and longer, or they're bleeding for freaking 20 days straight. Mm -hmm. Men becoming depressed on keto, possibly a lowering of your testosterone men okay I'm gonna say a couple things I did a stream uh, so that's my my top five and top uh, five like good and crappy things uh, of course the candida die off but like that can be fixed easy you know keto breath all these keto flu symptoms keto like tired that's also doing it wrong but that's also hypoglycemia Physiological insulin resistance, where your blood sugar just climbs and you have the early morning dawns phenomenon, you can't fix it. Your hair is falling out. I'm just saying. Can't sleep? Yeah. 
A lot of people can't sleep because they use carbohydrates to drop their blood sugar and then now that's not happening. Now, um, I'm going to deconstruct a little bit. I've already done that. Like you guys are eating mono foods, no cheese, no nuts, no caffeine. What's so what's wrong? I can't believe after all these years of me saying don't eat cheese, people are still asking why. Like, even if, like, these people have got cystic acne. They're like, once I cut out the dairy, like, the acne went away. <laughs> you know, my son's autism symptoms went down once I cut out the dairy. Oh, my freaking watery Hershey squirt out the butt thing went away when I cut out the dairy. And then people don't Google, why are they having these autism symptoms? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. So the benefits are amazing, but to achieve your benefits, you have to work incredibly hard. People expect to adapt. Now, like things that are coming synonymous with keto is like keto MCT, keto intermittent fasting. No, no, no. Okay, I wanna explain something. I've done a few intermittent fasting live streams. People are uh, uh, obsessed with their bodies. They're obsessed. I had a consultation this morning and I said, she's like, I want to do keto for my health. And I was like, but you do want to lose like 30 pounds, right? She's like, well, of course. Of course people want to feel better. It's very rare. Like the only people that I have in a consultation, because I do consultations, and I run a keto course all through stephanieperson.com. I had some guy, um, he had eczema so bad, he had it all the way down his arms and he was crying. He was like, I don't care about losing weight. I care about the wounds all the way down my arms. Okay, so what can I do? Oh, people having problems on carnivore too because they're not eating organ meats. You can't get away with certain things on these lifestyle changes, people. Um, if you focus on weight lo loss, on if you focus on intermittent fasting, because I, okay, listen, okay. People will drink. There's a woman who inboxed me and said, or she wrote on my, one of my comments, she said, I'm 51 and I lost blah, 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 weight fasting. It worked for me. And I'm gonna tell you this now, people. No one's talking about their metabolism. No one's talking about their crepey skin, the dark circles under their eyes. They're not talking about uh, their horrible sleep, the fact that they have no sex drive, the quality of their poop, the color of it, if it floats or not, or not. No one's talking about this. Because people love to get the adulation and the stroking of, Good job, Linda. I'm so proud of you. If you lose a large amount of weight, especially quickly, especially through fasting, no one's going to tell you that they crash and that they're tired and that they're moody and that they're, they have no sex drive and that they have hot flashes in the middle of the night. But darn, I lost 60 pounds. I, I mean, I don't understand. I've never met anyone. The woman I had in my consultation today. She literally is like, I'm 181 pounds and I can't get off the weight. She's 5'7". I can't get it off. I can't. I'm like, and you barely eaten nothing. And somebody said, so, so Stephanie, blah, blah, blah. Uh, fungus is wrong. Dingleberry's wrong. I'm, I don't want to say these people's names. Um, Mr. Shower, the shower, like all of these people are wrong. Right, Stephanie? And I laughed, I said, you just named a list of men. <laughs> oh, you guys, I do these videos because I'm trying to tell you the truth. People are selling products. People are, uh, yo, this is 51. Like, I, I ain't lying. There's nothing I'm hiding. Okay. And I tell you stuff that doesn't make me money. 
So I just want you guys to be careful doing this and understand your macros. Understand that you have to be concerned about rotating your foods. You must be concerned about getting enough fat in, okay? You have to be concerned with getting enough sleep. If you guys have an energy crisis, which most people do, and you're using bulletproof coffee and then intermittent fasting combined, you're probably damaging your leptin signaling, your leptin and ghrelin signaling. And unfortunately, women take the biggest brunt hit of it because if you're sitting at like, you know, over 24% body fat as a woman and you eat less and you can't get that weight off, that body fat percent, your lean mass, keep your lean mass, <laughs> like up this, the, uh, the uh, chat. Somebody's trying to troll me right now. Where are they? You are 51, but you've always had a small physique. So it's kind of unfair advantage point. You are in denial, woman. And it's comments like this, and it's mostly your genetics. That's embarrassing, Casey. You should be ashamed of yourself. That's embarrassing that you want to believe that. So if you believe that me at 50... I'm not 31, honey child, and you ain't gonna find that many 51 year olds looking like me with 10 surgeries and four years on um, mother sucking crutches. Four years, my leg is destroyed. It's embarrassing that you would even say that. You don't have, there ain't nothing like, you don't have the knee I have. The doctors are like, that's the worst knee I've ever seen in my life. You shouldn't even be able to walk. I walk with a limp, Miss Casey, and it's embarrassing that you have the audacity to take away my hard work because of your lacking. Is your lacking. Yes, stuff I've been true for a while. It's, it's like women like Casey who want to go, I have a small physique. You know why I have a small physique? Because I work for it, okay? I don't blame anybody's genetics. You know what genetics are? It's the shape of my muscles. I'm 51, you can't blame my uh, genetics anymore because I'm in the premenopausal age. Okay? I come from a massive family and not one person in my family looks like this. Not what you're gonna say. Not what you're gonna say. Nothing. Because people try to take the hard work away from people, but you black. But you this, no, it's called epi. And I used to say this six years ago when people tried to blame my genetics. My genetics have nothing to do with how lean I am because that's hormones. The shape of your muscle bellies, where the bicep separates from the shoulder, right? If it peaks, that's genetics, right? The shape of my tricep, but the fact that I have muscles and hormones because I work for it. And don't ever try to take that away from me because you are not doing what you need to do. I don't have a small frame. I have a small frame because I didn't eat myself to, to in, in oblivion. As a small child, I knew not to eat garbage. That is why, as a small child, because trust. In my home, we had Wonder Bread. We had freaking uh, Oreo cookies and chocolate chip, Chips Ahoy chocolate chip cookies, I ate Apple Jacks and all that stuff, but I've always been active. And then when I hit a certain age, I was like, I don't wanna eat this candy no more. You guys are hilarious, not you guys, that one person. No, I'm not a friend of, it. K, was it? KC, just look more at my videos. I do this stuff all the time. I'm not offended. I just know that a lot of people are watching and listen to you and wanna believe your narrative. So it's not an offense, it's sad. I feel it's like it's more pathetic that you are trying to, uh, sorry, I got pulled away. Oh, no worry, Deb. It's, it's, and I want, and I, I think it's good at some points, at some moments I become triggered so people understand what I'm passionate about. I do these videos and I don't lie to you people. And this woman here is trying to j blame genetics. Uh, I'm still small. No, I'm small. In stature I'm not fat because I work for it so you're using the wrong terminology and people need to understand 
to have a body like this, and I said this like three streams ago, to have a body like this, you must work every second of your life as you get older. You can't, when you juggle in the balls, you can't drop it once. That's what's up. And KC, you don't do that. <laughs> Thank you, Carol. Yeah, no, I mean, people really under need to understand. I am passionate about trying because this stream is about trying to be healthy. This stream is about know if you have autoimmunity and know if you have any hypoglycemia and what to do if you do something like keto because keto can harm you if it's done the right way, wrong way. And Casey's talking about I'm small because uh, my genetics at 51 with four years on crutches. That's ridiculous. It's embarrassing that in this time that people start to try to blame, excuse, make excuses for their own health. If you want to be healthy and maximize your genetic potential like I have, and I have, I have made a F ton of mistakes because I was brainwashed just like all of us were. And so now I'm trying to fix all of the mistakes that were made that I did to my body through the lack of education. And, and all of this uh, brainwashing of nonsense. And so I work diligently and I work like I've never worked before. Okay, that's what it's about. So if you ever seen some of my videos where I'm doing, doing handstand pushups with no wall, you know why I start doing handstand pushups as an adult? Because my legs are wrapped up. And I thought, well, if I can't use my legs, I'm going to use my arms. Who does that? That has nothing to do with genetics. Okay, so uh, bok choy, yes. Acorn squash, no, um, for your potassium, because squash has too many carbohydrates. And Gina's like, oh, Stephanie, up at genetics. And Steph does walk with a limp. You can see that in the, in the video when she was invited to Dr. Oz and was made to walk down the bloody stairs. I couldn't believe they didn't, uh, but they, they, de they did that to her. Well, I wasn't limping downstairs. They told me the producers on the Dr. Oz show, like, you can't see them stairs. They look like they're from the 1920s. I'm not going to lie. They are not like they need to redo the stairs on that show. They focus on the stage too much, but the stairs were so steep. They were like, like, like the stairs in Amsterdam and those small apartments, like they were so steep and they were so out of shape. They said, everybody, when you go down these stairs, be very, very careful. And because I have a fracked up knee, Casey, is it CK? Casey? I think because I have a fracked up leg from all those surgeries, I got to be careful. So you think about it, people who are lean do a lot of freaking cardio, right? They do a lot of plyometrics. They do a lot of leg stuff. I can't do any of that. So for me to stay lean, I got to use this body like this. Like I can't do, I can't like carve the body out with big, huge slams with the spike and, and the hammer. I have to do small ones and it takes 10 times longer. And if you worked out with me and you hung out with me, you'd be apologizing. Okay. Get her, Deborah. It's over now. Sassy. Um, let's see. You asked your question way back all those years ago. Was your mentor? Um, I don't think anybody was my mentor. I think uh, watching people do stuff, everybody's, I mean, it could be the homeless person. I mean, like, I just, I, you guys know I've traveled a lot. So I've, I've been to like villages and like I'll see people and I'll just be embarrassed of the society that we live in. Uh, like this Casey woman who keeps trying to trying her hardest. It's over now, Casey. No more comments can get through you through. Um, which troll is it? CS? Oh, okay. Casey. Casey got offended. And um yeah, so my, I think just by like when people say, oh my God, there's no choices of food. And I'm like, what about people who are forced to do the carnivore diet because their gut is so messed up that they're only eating meat and no spices except for salt. 
So it kind of gives you new perspective and appreciation when you go carnivore and you're like, oh, I can digest. I'm not, I'm not sharting out glass out of my butt anymore. Um, or I don't have the symptoms of Crohn's or diverticulitis when people go full, full carnivore. It's amazing. Now, some people are so messed up in their digestion that they're forced to fast, but there are better ways that we're not being taught. You don't have to intermittent fast to heal the gut and you don't have to fast to experience a cleaning up of your cells and to methylate. So I'm taking your guys' questions. And Deborah's saying that it uh, eliminated her daughter's eczema. Sorry guys, Tap, I'm looking at the old comments. Okay, I know coffee or of any kind. I'm addicted to one to two a day without grass-fed heavy cream. I may go for a few weeks without, but keep coming back. I know your protocol are, uh, are the best. Oh, thank you so much. Um, okay, so the coffee thing. You mentioned doing it wrong. Can it be dangerous? Um, dangerous is subjective. I mean, what's your level of danger? Will it uh, kill you? Probably not. Because I think you're going to stop doing it before that would happen. You'd feel so bad. Um, but it can... A lot of you guys have underlying issues and you don't know it. Like a lot of you guys are already having issues with your liver. And the liver enzymes, too much estrogen circulating in the bloodstream. Also, I forgot to mention the gallbladder is another, the top thing, five things that can really harm you, is if you can have a gallbladder attack, and then if that gets really infected, that can actually, that could technically kill you. But it's not keto, it's the fact that you probably had an infected gallbladder before, and then you tried to stuff a bunch of fat down, and it's, the gallbladder is like, like, no, like, that was the drop over the glass. Uh, things like gallbladder, um, people with the energy crisis, I think that's the biggest part in the hair, like the thyroid. So energy and thyroid and adrenal system, the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal thyroid axis, that's the worst that happens. And those aren't deadly. They're just, you feel ter terrible. No, I haven't done any research on CBD oil. I can only say by the people that I've been consulting who try to use it for keto, not really a big difference, not making people adapt more. So if you mean that when it comes to uh, some people do well on it, some people feel nothing on it and some people feel worse taking CBD oil. And as you guys know, people have been taking it enough now. There's enough companies trying to profit off of it that you can see all of the, the stories on in the blogs. You can look at that yourself. Uh, with Dita, uh, there's no problem with dairy um, if you don't have a problem with it. If you have a problem with it, it's you, you're going to feel really, really bad. So a lot of people have a gut dysbiosis. They cannot do, they have histamine intolerance. I'm sorry, they might be missing, as I've said many times now, diamine oxidase, which is uh, an enzyme to help break, it, break down the histamine. So butter, the proteins in the butter are very high in histamine or creates a histamine reaction in people and then they can't clear it out. And even some people are so bad they can't do ghee, of course they cannot do cheese, and they cannot do milk, and they cannot do kefir, and they cannot do raw milk or K2 milk or anything. And people who try to, to, to do this raw milk, they know because they feel horrible um, by trying to consume it. Now unfortunately, uh, raw K2 milk has too many carbs. Uh, kefir doesn't, A2 raw kefir, but again, a lot of people are reacting on it. So if you don't react, it's fine. It's like a probiotic, it's great for the gut. But if you react, you explode the gut. So do you still believe that it takes about three months to flip? Yeah, no, three months, it could take a year. Talking about, what you talking about? No, what I've said before is it goes in three month chunks. It's not, of course, I, 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 it's not that I believe it. I know it, I've seen that. You can produce ketones and you can still have wavering blood sugar 
when you first do keto, you got to realize, guys, you guys are coming from a freaking lifetime of eating carbs. More carbs than what you would do as a hunter-gatherer. So the body doesn't understand all this processed food. And it always, and, and it knows how to have an adrenal reaction from all of the food and lifestyles that we live. We don't get sleep, right? We don't rest. We don't breathe. We're like toxic, uh, inflamed mess. All of this stuff shoots up your blood sugar. And uh, you try to do keto, your fats, you have the wrong macros, you're not rotating your foods, and you're eating a bunch of olive oil, and you think you're adapting, but the body is trying to adapt, but it just won't because more than less, you have to have stable blood sugar. More than less, you have to make ketones that you're actually using. And in the beginning, it's like this all the time. One day, people always say this, oh, for two days, I really felt like I was in ketosis because I had so much energy, and then it went away. That's the thing. So when you finally get to people who are like, I feel good all the time, those are people like myself, this woman CK, very insecure person, uh, doesn't realize that to adapt, you've got to work. Like you have to act like you're training for the Olympics. You got to act like, you know, it's, it's, you know, this is the one thing that you got to do. You know, you live or you're going to die. Like that's how you got to treat the body when trying to adapt or it wants to digress into going to overproduction of, of uh, cortisol and by going through a gluconeogenesis process. To be honest, looking at the weight loss uh, of large to medium women makes me consider trying keto, but listening to you makes me want to get my health in order, period. Yeah, so there's a difference. It's, thanks, California. That should be my name because you know I love me some California. Born bred, even though I lived in Sweden, I'm like, when I was living in Sweden, y'all, I was like, get me back to California. I cannot handle this nasty weather. But I digress. I am not a Viking. Okay, that's what they say, Viking. I was like, that's so, you mean Viking? No, Viking. So, yes, but you can do keto at the same time as getting your health in order, right? You can use uh, the correct way to do this to heal the body. The body is going to lose body fat when you're healthy and you're going to lose muscle and your reproductive hormones and your hair when you when you intermittent fast and have an energy crisis or have adrenal issues that's just that's a fact that's a fact and so many people are like oh my god she's so right i did the intermittent fasting and i was so hungry and i was binging and my legs were getting really really skinny and i started getting my cellulite in the back of my legs and i was tired all the time but I lost 18 pounds. Hercules, Hercules, everybody, let's all give Linda a little hand out. Okay, let's, let's, let's clap, clap, clap. That's why people go on the internet and say it's so amazing. They don't tell you what's really going on. Every single person that I've had a consultation with has had some type of stress to the body in forms of chronic constipation, cysts, methotestosterone, people who've got low blood pressure, high blood pressure, high blood sugar, insulin resistance, autoimmunity, rhinoids, uh, vertigo, like uh, fungus, white tongue, itchy bung. Was that the article that came out? Keto crotch. <gasps> I know. You guys know when my book is out. There's a lot of stuff going on with my book that I can't announce to the internet. So a lot of you guys are confused why it's not out yet, but when it, it's gonna come out and when it does, and to be honest, I don't want it out in the whole keto explosion. I wanna wait till it calms down. Then I'll release my book when it was before the keto thing exploded. It was quiet. People are more willing to learn and then the keto explosion went on and everybody's obsessed and, oh, let's go from keto to intermittent fasting and let's make intermittent fasting keto because I'm obsessed with losing weight. No, absolutely not. Sorry for the, this phone, this phone. I love me some friggin' Sam, no, Galaxy phones. Okay, but I don't like this version of it. It's just a nightmare. Keto. Palm oil. I'm not for what not keto no <laughs> uh 11 bravo i lived in sweden okay for 11 years 11 bravo and i also live in california 
let me tell you something. You go take your butt to the North Pole, okay, where it's dark nine months out of the year and nothing grows. And then like those cartoons with good and evil and everything's dead and frozen. And if you tried to be a hunter-gatherer in Sweden, you're going to be starving unless you live near the coast. Then you got to fish. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. People like to use black seed oil for candida, but for keto, no. And I don't know how black seed oil works for trying to break biofilms. Some people swear by black seed oil. Some people swear by black seed oil and oregano oil for candida. Some people swear by boron, or it's also called borax, or they swear by, by ozone or monolaurin. But just for keto, black seed oil, no. California is amazing. It's this 11, like this person doesn't get it. California is not a mess. If you're not a mess here, you're not going to be a mess anywhere. I could, I've been all over the world. Y'all know I've been everywhere. I've been living in small villages with the freaking Waluba Waluba locals. And no, mm, I am privileged to be here. It's a privilege. Okay. Even om jag bor i Sverige, jag ska aldrig bo i Sverige igen, aldrig. Det är bättre att bo här. So even though I lived in Sweden, and I can speak some Swedish, and I lived there a long time, I will never live there again. Because I lived there, honey. I lived there, and I lived here. I know the difference. You don't. You lived in California in grade school. I love it here. Like the memories of just living in California as a child and now as an adult and like traveling all over the world and then living in a freaking cold climate up in the North Pole where Santa Claus is. Uh-uh. Men du vet, jag älskar alla människor som kommer från Skandinavien. Jag försöker prata till alla. But no. Och de försöker jag bor här också. <laughs> Thank you, Gina. She's like, I'm in Southern California, girl. Love it. <laughs> oh, we love it here. Oh, I love it. And, you know, we're having problems all over the world, right? There are problems in Sweden as well. They're having really problem, huge problems with the immigrant population. Um, the Swedes cannot deal with it. They cannot deal with the gypsies there. It's very difficult for them. Um, the immigrant population who are coming from like war torn countries, it's difficult for them. They're going through it. Like they, mm, it's tough. Like here in Cali, it is a mix of people. Y'all better get used to each other here. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm just saying like, it's just everyone and it's the ultimate melting pot. Sometimes it don't melt, but I melt to everything. There's the Simi Valley, Brooklyn here. Brooklyn. Here's where people who watch the replay are like, you know, it's so you're just talking about whatever. This is so distracting. Um, I can't say this, you guys. Uh hey Steph, my thoughts on hair loss for keto. You mean on keto or for keto? A lot of is said that you lose hair, but it starts to rebuild and repair itself even better. Okay, double GT. Let me explain this. Okay, if your hair is falling out, it means you have an underlying thyroid issue, or you're anemic, or you have plaque psoriasis in the scalp that kills the cells. Or men, you have too much calcification of the hair follicle and too much estrogen and dehydrotestosterone. But it typically the main reason why you hear falling hair falling out on keto is because you're already having problems with your T3 production. And a lot of you guys are eating like cream cheese and like almond flour. <laughs> and the body's like, I'm not using glucose, I'm not using ketones, enough ketones. And so I, I can't get energy from anywhere. So the reason the hair falls out is that the body turns the volume down on energy. So any type of metabolic process C that happens that you don't need, like digestion, that's why people get constipated, like hair growth or cold hands and fingers or dry skin, the body's like, 
Well, we're going to take away things that aren't the most important to survive. And a lot of that's hair loss or reproductive people are, are, are like not having a problem with their reproductive system. Um, hair loss is, is a big thing that is too expensive for the body to produce if it's not eating, if, if the glycogen isn't, isn't filled and the ketone uh, production and uptake is too small, the body will dump the hair. And it's not like, oh, if I do keto longer, it's gonna improve. No, you have to change your lifestyle. You have to get your macros right. You have to stop eating all these inflammatory foods. Stop eating olive oil all the time because you think that's ketotic and MCT oil nonsense and intermittent fasting. I'm the only one who, who, who says no to intermittent fasting, like staunch, 100% against it. I am so cool with intermittent fasting if you guys rest and do nothing, okay? And if you don't have hypoglycemia. Deborah says to book a consultation, go to stepperson.com. Thank you, Deborah. She goes to the Google doctor. Who does? <laughs> Not me, child. I don't need to go to the Google doctor. I hope you ain't talking about me because I've been working with thousands of people all these years. I don't need to Google nothing. You just go right to the source. My hair's, my heart's falling out. How long and how often do I recommend taking oregano oil for gut, gut issues? The problem is, oh, your cousin, my bad. Um, the problem is, is that a lot of people, oregano oil is full on histamine. So some people get sick on it. A lot of these things you guys have to test because I am shocked. No, no, not shocked. Shook on how many of you guys have SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and gut issues and don't digest food very well. And then you start pounding down the oregano oil. You're like, oh, my God, I feel so bad. <laughs> Why do people go on the carnivore diet? Because they, they really have a hard time with the histamine. Um, but everyone's different. Oregano oil, can, I don't think that oregano oil completely kills a biofilm. But it can help take down the, the, the candida spore count. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take. Everybody's different. I don't know how infected you are. I don't know how much the nasty, you know, creepy crawly tentacles of candida fungus start. I don't know how how um, uh, systemic. I, I don't know how much of an over overgrowth you have. Everybody's different. Nobody can answer that. It's, yeah, it's, it's most likely going to be over 300 pages. Okay, here's a great example. Pamela says, I'm 50 and I have lost 25 pounds but still have a belly. Because Pamela doesn't understand if she lost muscle, if she lost water, or if she actually lost fat. So that's the problem. Weight on the scale, which I did a live stream, weight on a scale and weight, um, uh, 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 like actual fat, weight and, and preserving your lean mass is not the same. And a lot of people don't understand that once you become fully ketotic, then your body's not dependent on glucose. Every time your glycogen is de depleted and you don't eat carbs as a carb person, you're going to start burning out your amino acids and proteins in your body, especially if you're chronically in a situation where you're like running and exercising and doing stuff and your glycogen is depleted. You will go into gluconeogenesis. You'll step on a scale, especially if you don't replenish your electro electrolytes and your sodium potassium is out of whack. Like there's this, I gained, I lost, you know, I have water. Like people are like, I, I'm always between like six and I'm like four, four and seven pounds. And they don't realize a lot of that's water fluctuation, but a lot of people lose water because carbohydrate, hydrate, carbohydrate, hydrate, eat carbs, fill with water. Um, so your body tends to flush a lot of the water that you're not no longer needing to hold on to anymore. And that's part of the weight loss. And you can also lose muscle most likely. And that's the reason why I still got a belly because the body's like this restaurant right there. Yo, you got to convert that into a ketone restaurant. You need the right key to the, to the door to get into the apartment. And the traditional weight loss key is just going to keep that chub around the waist and, and cellulite and, and, you know, not a firm booty. Okay, Steph, I appreciate you and what you do. Please keep it, keep at it. I'm going to make dinner. Have a great night. Oh, thank you so much, Dudley G. Yeah, I need to go as well. I just had a stomach bug, flu, couldn't eat anything, just electrolytes. Well, at least you had the sensibility, Joe, to do electrolytes. And if you're getting that sick, what's going on with your immune system here?
So I wanted to do um, a live stream, short one, 30 minutes, because people don't like them when they're longer. Um, but again, I went over because I started to, um, I started to rant. <laughs> Um, I think that if I watched a live stream where I was so controlled, I'd get bored watching the person. It's kind of fun to see that a person is human, um, sometimes. But another thing is I'm going to talk about what I eat in a day. I'm going to do that in the, another video live stream. People want to see, this one was like, ah, you are hiding what you eat in a day. I'm like, I am hiding nothing, not that. What this woman does not understand is people will copy exactly what I do. Y'all don't live the life that I live. You haven't done keto for 11 years. You cannot eat what I eat in a day. What I'd like to do is teach people about, that's the thing about putting out a book with recipes. I have disclaimers and descriptions everywhere, all over every recipe. That takes so long. Who does that? Who does a recipe book and goes, Tomato is a nightshade. If you have a thyroid condition, don't eat this recipe. Go do these tests. Do you have a deficiency in this? Like, who writes books like that when you're putting out recipes? Cooking show. Oh, oh, that skateboard show. That'd be more fun, right? How about travel show? Um, to Southern California just for that. Sounds like an awesome book, I'll purchase it, yeah. Okay guys, don't forget, I do uh, information on my stories every day on Instagram, which is Stephanie Ketogenic. I have my Facebook fan page, which is Stephanie, the business person, as in the business. And I do consultations and I run a keto course page, which is $15 a month. How's that? The money grab, 15 bucks a month. Um, yes, please, kidney stones. Are you, you guys have to really understand the biliary system. All those systems collect stones. So that's liver, kidney, and your gallbladder. Estrogen plays a big role in these stones. Uh, blood sugar di dysregulation play a big role in these st stones. People who then now cannot break down oxalates develop stones. Uh, people eat poor quality of foods and meats with purines and uric acid develop stones. But really their stone development most likely has come from years of eating processed food and having high estrogen having messed up gut lemon juice thank you for all of your info i have watched a bunch of your videos much appreciated thank you jennifer i appreciate it 300 very unlucky number make sure it's more or less one of the part of the minute club i don't know what you're talking about i'm like i was ranting while you guys were commenting hey stephanie could you please please explain a bit more about keto and kidney stones please oh that's your question so you don't develop kidney stones. Uh, you have to have a propensity for crystals and stones in your biliary system. So people who develop stones probably had crystals before they did keto and then they start eating all this protein and more than what their kidney, because the kidney has to like, has to filter all that protein. And you guys are still eating chicken breasts and you know, you guys don't realize if you've got any issues with breaking down oxalates um, and spinach. And so, and then people have a lot of estrogen and estrogen, uh, overproduction of estrogen. They can't because people aren't crapping and they're, they're, um, they're constipated <laughs> and they can't get rid of that. And with that, you know, if, if estrogen has to get out of the body or it gets reabsorbed back into the bloodstream and it starts clogging your biliary system and that's what's created, that also can help in the formation of those stones. So um, you gotta do, people are like, sure, do I do I detox? But detoxing just isn't like, oh, I'm gonna do a celery freaking detox or I'm gonna crap on the toilet for a weekend by doing just like a, a, like a, like a flush. Um, you also have to do a lot of, uh, get your stress down sleep because that's gonna get things moving. 
do 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 water and exercise and meditation and breathing and all that hippie stuff. She developed one slowly after starting, but then I took lemon. Oh yeah, lemon water to dissolve the oxalates. Um, yeah, so people sometimes are uh, have an issue with the uh, oxalates, so don't eat spinach if you have a problem with either histi histamine or if you have an oxalo, oxalo, I'm always saying it wrong, oxalo, bacter, bacteria. Who, do, people don't have this bacteria that helps break down the oxalates, so that could be a reason why some people are developing the stones and then stuffing too much protein because all these channels say that too much protein doesn't matter, and then people on carnivore are eating like two pounds of meat brat and i'm like yo what is this vegetable police guys like i was i never did well on keto i'm like so i have to eat carnivore with orange juice i'm like bro you're not eating enough fat to do keto people keep forgetting that keto is a high fat diet but if i eat fat i'm not gonna lose weight <sighs> No, I cannot uh, refer to any study uh, with heart fibrillation. I cannot because I haven't even heard of that. On keto and intermittent fasting is great. Results? No, it's not. Blood sugar work good. No hormones, no issues. Still see small decrease in L LBM. Use BG monitors, blood sugar work, plenty of research, adaptive protocol according. No. You you think it, that that's the Kool Aid that you think that that because when people say that keto did well for me and there's no numbers there's no like anything I can't have a conversation with you I can't deconstruct what you're going through you guys fasting and getting your insulin down for the short term but there's like a rebound effect fasting and running around doing a bunch of stuff is going to create blood sugar dysregulation using your blood sugar monitor like what is good blood sugar to if if I hung out for your week I'd be like. Was it BG? Was it Tamsin? Thompson? I don't know how to say her name. If I hung out with you for a week, you'd be like, oh, stuff, I didn't think about that. Oh, stuff, I didn't think about that either. And then you'd do a workout with me, you'd be like, I'm so tired. Why are you tired? <laughs> Such a smart ass. Thank you, Pamela. Thank you for reminding these intermittent fasters that you can still do keto and still have a stomach. Yes, because a lot of people are not actually adapted. To adapt, there's a lot of lifestyle changes that have to happen. And if you don't incorporate those lifestyle changes and mind changes, this is going to stay and this flab is going to stay and the blah, 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 blah is going to stay and the depression and the low energy and the gut issues all going to stay. Let me see, I'm 12 and 6, okay, to eat between 12 and 6 p.m. Or is this that fasting? No, no fasting, Terry. If you fast, I have no problem with fasting. Absolutely none. When you do nothing when you fast. And who does nothing? I want you to sit and with a book and fast until noon and do nothing. Who does that? Okay, guys, it's been an hour. I told myself I was going only going to go 30 minutes. Look good, Steph. Keep up. Greetings from Holland. Wait. How do you say it? Bakabaden? Wait, no, wait, wait. Damn, all the Dutch just went out of my head. The only thing now I can remember is what the, the sign in the trams, which is, what is it? Wil du sit ich staan or something like that? Stan, Stan. Oh, that Dutch is hard to learn how to pronounce. Ew, what window do you eat? Uh, my window is I wake up, I break the fast immediately. So I get up and I eat a lovely meal with about six tablespoons of animal fat. And then I incorporate my liver, my organ meat, my heart, my kidney, and my liver. And then I rotate my meats like eggs pork, chicken, salmon, beef, bison. I rotate it all. And then I'll go and I'll have 
probably about another three tablespoons of fat and a yolk and I go out the door. Then I come back and I have a dinner, full dinner, about two to three ounces max and another six tablespoons of fat. Oh, and I'm eating fat all the time. Like I just, I go into the kitchen, I'm just plopping it in my mouth. We don't even consider me eating anything. Thank you. Pamela loves my enthusiasm, even though I'm a little sarcastic. I talked about estrogen buildup in men. What's the best way to reduce estrogen levels? It's, a, it's the same thing. It's, um, you know, be careful for all of the xenoestrogens coming into your diet. It's getting rest. It's pooping. It's sleeping. It's drinking enough water. It's just the same thing that a woman would have to do. But that's a whole nother console. I mean, uh, live stream or video and I'll go more into that later how to stop the aromatization of men okay so Terry's asking how I eat and I don't want to talk about how I eat because Terry will try to eat the way I eat you can't eat the way I eat Terry has to eat the way she needs to eat unless it's a man Terry must eat the way Terry eats so when I do consultations nobody has the same exact schedule Every schedule is determined on a person's metabolism and their own individual lifestyle. So if I show you what I eat in a day and what I do in a day, people are going to live the life that I live. I'm freaking exercising the whole day and I'm on my bike the whole day. Who does that? And meditating and, and skateboarding and eating a shit ton of fat. 200 and seven, I eat at least a block of Kerrygold plus all the other fats getting me up sometimes at 270 of fat in a day thank you Jay money you don't you guys don't have to do tests if you want to do tests for yourself and not for a consultation try to get an insulin test if you live in the states try to get a, to find out what your a1c is Try to know your reproductive hormonal panel. Other things like a full thyroid panel can be inconclusive. I can't speak. Uh, TPO anti your antibodies. You can test for CRP markers, C-reactive protein. But to be honest, just knowing like things around your blood sugar and your sex hormones is really, really, really advantageous just in general for yourself. And then using a glucometer that measure, measures your blood glucose and ketones is really, really important. In the consultation, she will thoroughly ask about your health, lifestyle, everything, then make recommendations on how you should do keto. Yes, yeah, so Deborah is reminding you guys all how consultations work. And um, basically, I sit down and we talk and I find out everything first. So I start asking people don't are not used to being able to, to talk to someone and go, you know, when I was five, you know, I was born, I was a C-section baby. I wasn't breastfed. Uh, I was in foster care. Uh, we, it's this, today, the woman was like, we grew up on garbage. She's like, you know, all these people in my family have health, have health issues and a lot of heart attack issues in her family. And I'm like, well, what's the food that you grew up on? And she's like, garbage. She's like, horrible food. We talk about that. We talk about establishing, like for women, it's like, did you have any menstrual cycle issues when you first started your cycle? Did you have acne? Did you have digestive issues as a child? Did you have an energy crisis? ADD, poor concentration. Did your parents put you on medications? Did you have any autoimmunity as a child? We go into all of that. I find out how your poop quality is and if you have acid reflux, if you have any, uh, like I find out everything and I sit and I write it down and then I begin to ask more questions. And after that, it's clear as heck already where we need to go with this. Then I go and I figure out what you do, what your entire day looks like. So for the woman who's biatching about me saying what I eat in a day, it all depends on the individual. So like, what time do you wake up? Do you wake up at three o'clock to go to a gym? Do you wake up at 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning to go to the gym? You know, do you have, are you on thyroid medication? Do you have to wait 30 minutes before um, eating anything? Are you not hungry when you wake up? Do you drink coffee? Do you eat really late at night? Are you third shift night worker? Are you second shift night worker? Like, do you have issues? Like, do you have a, a, a adrenal problems? How long has it been since you've been to the gym? Do you do any workouts whatsoever? This morning, a woman, she tore her bicep 
They were only able to attach one of her uh, muscles on the bicep. So she's only got one, a one set. There's no bicep. There's a monocep. And she was afraid to do any exercise. And I'm like, you're not going to tear that bicep if you're doing five pound weights, you know? And I'm like certain motions, you're not really using the bicep. So I was showing her all of the exercises that she could do with a torn bicep. Um, we go over the timing of your food, what kind of food, what sensitivities you have. Um, if you like, like literally we go over everything, everything, how to use the glucometer. How do you know if you're in ketosis? What if you have your hair fall out? What about magnesium? What supplements do I need to take supplements? I've got candida. I've got eczema. Like we go through it all. It's not just freaking keto, which is why I'm creating a whole low carb, high fat thing as well. Cause some people are like, they do keto hypoglycemia, do keto hair falls out. Well, let's do a transitional uh, lifestyle. And then you can decide if you want to go in keto or if you want to stay at low carb, high fat. And on that note, you guys, I'm going to go. Don't forget to like up the stream. I went too long. So when I go long, you get a lot of Stephanie, silly ridiculousness, but at the same time, that's what live streams are. As you can see, I'm feeding in videos that are like three minutes long of just short information. And I will continue to do that. If you feel like the live streams are driving you crazy, don't watch it. And then I'll create the shorter videos that get to the point. Good night, everybody. Yes, yes. Time to un time under tension is uh, slow on the negatives. I don't do Doug McGuff's time under tension is too, too many seconds on the negative, but negative training or time under tension is really, really great. If you guys have adrenal issues and you don't want to sit there and do a lot of like heavy lifting with a lot of reps, like no CrossFit, if you have adrenal insufficiencies, uh, uh, also the timing of your workouts, all of these, the type timing, everything we put together. I mean, we literally put together everything. And then people are always like, well, when can we talk again? Always. Pilates is good, yes, but we want to do some uh, resistance training as well, right? We want actin and myosin. We want those muscle fibers to grind, and you're not always going to get that with just Pilates, although you will experience uh, hypertrophy to some varying degree. Thanks for always. Oh, thank you, Crystal. Thank you. Uh, good night, Jennifer. Planks. I don't really like planks because they kind of, a lot of y'all have to sit at desks, and it's really hard in the back. So you can do like baby planks with your, uh, um, with your knees down. You can, you know, do these like half planks. If you have built a good core and you have no back problems, then planks are great. Good night, Stephanie. Good night, De what is it? Deidre O'Brien. Always getting the day now. Oh, you're in Australia. Have a good sleep. Have a good day, Deidre. Deidre, Deidre, spelling it a different spelling. Okay, you guys, I'm out. Thank you, Deborah, as well, to deal with one troll. Thank you for the person to donate to the super chat. And have a great weekend, everyone. And I'm out.